Now I'm going to go to a PC, just like you would hooking your laptop up. And we're going to go to my presentation that uh, is called Education 4.0 and it's like an initiative name all about getting away from the traditional chalk and talk or nowadays with whiteboard pens, squeak and speak as I like to call it and creating activities. So this is a presentation software called Lynx. So I'm going to talk to you about Lynx and I'm also going to talk to you about the other free software we give away which is called Snowflake. So Lynx is our presentation software. If in your schools you use PowerPoint or if you use say things like Smart Notebook, you can open up those files within Lynx and I can demonstrate that very quickly. I can go to my content here, I can add in folders, I can have a shortcut to um, areas of my laptop or to a cloud drive. So I've got some old smart notebook files here. I'm going to bring one in, just that simply, asking me about importing it into links. Here it comes, thank you everyone who's gathering around. So this is an old smart notebook file but open up in our software links to roll. And here it is, so all the different pages of that presentation have ported over into links. But I want to show you my presentation, my BET presentation. Now, within links, you've also got a built-in web browser, so you can look for content on there and then take it straight over. You don't have to come out of your PowerPoint and look for things and then add them in later on. You've also got a media search tool, so you can search for images, you can search for YouTube videos that are stripped of all adverts. They don't jump to other inappropriate videos. They don't have people's horrible comments and things like that. You've got clip art, you've got GIFs, and links to the Khan Academy as well. So that's all within the software. So I'm going to uh, take you on a journey through the curriculum carousel. And the idea of this is that although it's presentation software, you can also turn it into interactive activities that the children would be able to access. And with links, it's multi-platform. So you can have an app directly onto the board, onto your iPad, uh, you can, and, uh, and of course have it on, on your laptops. So, we're going to uh, take this into full screen mode. Delivery mode. There we go. Now it's in full screen mode. So we're going to go to the next slide. So, to create interactive activities, it's fairly similar. So I've added in lots of links, like hyperlinks, to different pages and even places on the internet. So if I tap on Goldilocks here, for example, we can take ourselves into the world of Goldilocks. So I've got this picture here in the background, but the characters can be moved around. So I just simply search for the characters and strip the background from them. And so we can tell the story. So as the three bears go off for their breakfast, Goldilocks can sneak into the cottage. So we've gone back in time. The three bears are still here. They fall down. Baby bears bounce around on his chair, which of course we all know what's going to happen to that poor sad piece of furniture, but over here hiding is Goldilocks herself, who will uh, eventually end up bouncing on the beds and sleeping here until Daddy Bear chases her out of the window. So you can see how children would be able to practice their storytelling skills by creating a, an activity so they can't mess around with it other than everything we've put into display mode uh, within the, that linked page. So it's a presentation but it's also an activity. So I'm going to jump back. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you into the curriculum carousel and my beautiful assistant Ryan is going to join me and he's going to do the activities. I'm not going to force any of you to come up. He's going to be my guinea pig. It's more like a hamster than a guinea pig, but I'm sure you'll understand. Okay, so, jump in here. I've now jumped into Snowflake. Now Snowflake is all about interactive activities. So Snowflake helps you uh, use templates to create a little activity. So this one, for example, a teacher has created. It's like an online community. So this activity here is all about taking these keywords, taking the tag, and matching it up into the right place. If I get the right place, it goes green. If I put it into the wrong place, it goes red. And I move it back into the right place. So it's a nice little activity. Another one of the templates within Snowflake is this spinner. So with this spinner, you can have up to 32 segments. So you can have all the children in your class on a spinner. And then as you spin the wheel, the child's name could be selected or whatever it is. So in this case, it's all about the subjects. And when one is selected, you can have it so that it's taken away. So you're not picking the same children all the time if you use it for that. So we've selected a history. So Ryan's going to have a go at a history activity. To do that, we're going to jump into Snowflake properly. 
So this is what Snowflake looks like. It doesn't normally have this split capability, but I wanted to, wanted to show you that because you can put Snowflake into two screens or four screens and you can have up to four different activities or apps playing at the same time. And what some schools do is they buy screens that will turn into a table. You can turn these two upside down so you can have children all around the table playing four different activities at the same time. So I've chosen history for Ryan. This is the main interface. So I'm going to go around the interface to an activity that uh, Snowflake have already provided for you the jigsaw activity. Here it comes. I'll also go full screen for this activity so you can get a better look. And what I realised with the jigsaw is that because you can put in any picture you like, we could enhance history lessons. So if I put in an artefact, children don't normally get to play around with artefacts. So I'm going to make a jigsaw and then Ryan is going to come up very excitedly. He's going to have a go they're trying to put this artifact together. So it's like if you imagine children piecing together that artifact, looking at all the pieces, what can they tell about the ancient Greeks? What can they learn? And because our screens are multi-point touch, I can help him at the same time. Or hinder. There we go. I'll do that nice easy one in the middle. This is getting more difficult as the week goes on. There we go. There's a handle up there. Let's, uh, there we go. So we've managed to put that up, that activity uh, together. So if I come out of this app now and I go back to my desktop, which is there, we're going to see where the spinner takes us next. So the history zone has been taken away now. So we're going to go to a musical activity. This is Ryan's favourite. This is your final time now, Ryan. So I'm hoping you're going to be really brave. He's, he's not <laughs> really brave. No, I know, I know. Okay, so we're going to go into this activity now. I'm going to make this full screen. So it's a musical lesson. We've got, we have like a drum kit sort of activity, but we've got this nice piano activity here. And I've recorded two tunes in advance for Ryan, and we're going to see if he's going to be brave to try and play one of them. So see if you recognise them. Here's the first one. Close Encounters fans. And here's the second tune. Come on then, Brian. Have a go at tune number one. <laughs> we know we will. I can't do tune two. Ah, uh, well done, Ryan. He's got that right. Thank you very much, ladies. Give him a round of applause. He needs all the encouragement he can get. So we're going to come out of full screen mode. And I'm going to go to the desktop. So we're going to spin the spinner again. See where we end up. Ah, an art activity. Now for this one, we're going to go to links. So if I press on the link in my palette there, we're going to go to Picasso's palette. So if you've ever seen some math software that has infinite clone tools, so you can have lots of different shapes that come out, and I thought, well, why not use it in a more creative way? So children would have this activity. They can't mess around with the background or anything, but they can select these shapes. And Ryan's going to have a go at recreating this picture of himself, aged by about five years, I reckon. He hasn't got long left. <laughs> so, with our touchscreen technology, the, you know, the capability can very easily rotate, shrink, grow things, uh, add extra Botox to those lips. There we go, missing your nose. How does she smell? Terrible. There we go, thank you very much. Now you'll notice that Ryan hasn't noticed that these backward S shapes on the hair our normal S shapes over here. Yeah, he wasn't able to do that. So I can help him out. Any item that is movable in this delivery mode, you can bring up this little menu here. So you can change the colour and the thickness and things like that of these. But if I go to other options, I can transform the shape and I can flip it vertically. And there we have the S shape that Ryan so badly needed to make it perfect. So that's that activity done. So I'll go back over here and we're going to come out of full screen mode. We're going to go back to our spinner. And now we've got a spag activity. So I'm going to jump straight back into links. So using that spinner, it shows that we can just jump very quickly from activity to activity. So we're going to go full screen again. Now this is the only activity where if you want to join in a little bit, you can. So what I've done is I've put a picture or a GIF in the background. 
and I've split a shape over the top and put these numbers on and using this mass tool spin the die or dice there's more than one and we remove a section at a time and it's a bit of catchphrase so we've got a seven that's a very handy one there to help you out if anyone thinks I know it you can call out oh another seven an eight so we have two clouds there grabbing something off each other I think we've got a winner on the back there guys Steal, Steal my, my thunder. Congratulations, thank you very much, sir. And we have another one here. So if I roll the dice, oh, we've got a six. That's handy, seeing that little three there. It's a big clue. And, uh, come on, six, right, five. Six, three. Anyone like to guess this one? Seven will help a lot. For any maths buffs in the audience. Let's pretend that I rolled a four. Oh, look, that's got a four in it. Apple pie, thank you very much ladies, fantastic. So we're going to come out of that activity now and we're going to head back to our spinner. Spin the quick on carousel again. Ah, so now we're going to test out Ryan's mathematical abilities. So Ryan, we're going to jump to my mass activity. Oh, there we go. So, in links you have um, text and mass recognition software. So with the pencil tool here, I can bring up this little menu and I can uh, show you the text recognition by saying hello to you all. Do those, so it'll turn into text for you. You've also got shape recognition. For all of you that hate drawing a circle and having the children mock you, you can do that now very simply. And you've also got this really handy mass recognition. So if I use that, I can do a sum for Ryan. A nice easy one for you, Ryan. Whoa! That's because I'm in delivery mode. So I'll go backwards. Woo! There we go. Come back out of that. Shrink that down. There we go. Make that one a bit larger there. Hide that answer. I don't want Ryan to see it. Didn't see that, did you, Ryan? I didn't. Uh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so Ryan's going to come up now with the pencil and have a go at solving these two problems. Keep, you keep changing them. You're supposed to yeah. leave the sums the same, so I know what they are. No, I'm not supposed to create them while I'm in delivery mode. I'm supposed to have done that beforehand. Too eager. Anyway, now that uh, Ryan's had a good go at that, I can go in, I can toggle the answers and see if he's got them correct. So he thinks this one is 17, he's right. And this one, 15, he's also correct. So if you do a page of sums here, the children uh, could have the answers revealed to them so that they can peer or self-assess their work as they go along, which of course is a big thing nowadays, isn't it? Okay, so I'll go back into delivery mode, now that I want delivery mode on, and we'll come out of full screen, and back to our spinner. And this time we're going to go back into Snowflake for our geography activity. So, we're going to go full screen, Let's see, where's our geography activity? Here it is. Okay. So I'll just make it full screen. So for this activity, it's a bit like the pinning activity of the uh, water cycle that we saw earlier, but this time it's all about matching flags to the points on the atlas where they exist. So Ryan, come on up. Ecuador. It's two in South America, so this should be interesting. I'll start with South Korea. <laughs> uh, yeah, those two are definitely not in South America. So we've got Ecuador, oh no, sorry, Ecuador, Argentina. Oh, congratulations, Ryan, well done, excellent. So that's another nice little interactive activity that the children can do. Okay, so I'll go back to my desktop. There it is. And back to the spinner. Only two activities to go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sticking with me. So we've got an angles activity now, so we're going to go back to uh, links, go to full speed. So for this activity, I've put some uh, angles in the background here. And you can hear a little voice recording of a, of a screen capture that I did. There's a voice recorder tool built into links so I can video what I'm doing on the screen with my mouse. 
and sort of have some instructions for the children to copy as they're going along. So you'll see that it's manipulating the protractor there. And then Ryan can come up and take this protractor down to these angles that are in the background and use it to find out what those angles are. So you can see he's been very good, he's lining up the zero line and he's using the little toggles there to mark his angle. And when he's happy with that angle, he can stamp it and it leaves behind his work, what he believes is the answer. He did very well earlier. I'm giving him a one degree margin of error for each one and of course he's got to get all three of them right to get the one mark because he's getting him ready for the sats. I can't remember what it was earlier. Have you changed it? No, I haven't changed it. I'm going to try that. Okay. <laughs> so, now if I want to check his answers, I'm going to come out of the delivery mode and I'm going to go to my background mode now, which is where I put those in the first place. So I'm in background mode, so now I can toggle these and I can have a look to see if he got them right. So if I go to other options, I can show in degrees. 114 degrees, he got that one correct. This one. Other options, 54 degrees, he's got two out of two. And now this final one, showing degrees. Oh, one degree out, but he still gets the mark. So well done, Ryan, excellent. Now, for the final activity I'm gonna show you, we go back to Snowflake, and I'm gonna uh, change the way that I've split up the screen here. So I'm gonna go to two. Now, so you can see this a lot clearer. So this is a science activity now, but this could be anything. This here is called Nodes. And I really like Nodes because you can use it as a space to create content for children to interact with and search for you know, information. And it's safer than just saying, here's an iPad, go on the internet, find things. Because you know children with an iPad lesson will end up anywhere. There's always two at the back playing on Minecraft. So this is content that you can control yourself. So each node, you tap on it, and you can put in there some text, or a picture, or even a video. If you hit the little plus button here, out come all the other nodes. And these are nice and interactive for the children. Each one of these nodes could have an extra node that you tap on. So in this case, it's all about learning about the moons. So if this was Henry VIII, out could pop his wives, and from his wives could come the children, so on. So at the same time, on this side is going to be a quiz. And this is a quiz using one of the themes of Snowflake. There's one like a, a dungeon theme or the forest theme. This is the space theme, so it's got a nice little animation taking you into the quiz. Very simple to create. Type in a question, give it, come up with three answers, tick which one is the right one. So Ryan's going to have a go at trying to find uh, the names of two other dwarf planets beside Pluto. So he's reading all about Pluto, he's found the answer, and he's got it correct. So he goes to the next question. Name three of Jupiter's moons, so he needs the Jupiter node, but he needs the moon node that comes out of that. So he's reading the information, and he's found the right answer. So it's just a really nice space where children could have a little quiz, and so they're engaged, they're keeping focused, and the other good thing is that children can create these for themselves. If you buy Clever Took Screen and you have a site license for Snowflake, you put it on all of your uh, desktop computers or your Chromebooks or whatever, and they can create notes. Instead of saying, let's make a PowerPoint or let's make a Word document, they'd probably love to make notes instead. Now the very final thing that we're going to do, if you want to join in, is here, Another feature of Snowflake is that you can um, create a poll um, to engage the children and see how much they've learned. So my poll is all about whether or not you've enjoyed this presentation, but it could be um, about questions to check their understanding. So what happens with this is that as I press start, if you have a QR code reader, you can join in, just scan that, and it will take you to the questionnaire. If you haven't got a QR code reader, you've got a phone that's into their name and you can access the internet, go to ansr.it, which is in the green banner at the top, and just type in the four-digit code 2681. Are you joining in? No QR code reader on your phone? I'm in. Ah, oh, brilliant. So, oh dear. 
So the Ryan is here. Don't worry, I'll be kind with my feedback, despite the fact you changed all the questions from this morning. Yeah, so I've been a bit of a pest to, to Ryan today. So we'll, we'll go we'll go through it anyway. So I'm either going to get 100% success or 0%. So we'll, we'll start. So has Ryan found this session interesting? He has 10 seconds to uh, hopefully tap yes. This is where I find out if I'm going to buy him a pint or not. Hey! Uh, go on to the next question. Which links activity did you enjoy suffering the most, Ryan? The angling for success, Picasso's palette, catchphrase or counter? I enjoyed them all equally. Oh, of course. He has chosen angling for success. Only because he got it right today. And which snowflake activity did you enjoy the most? Solar System Quiz, Piano Master, Flags of the World, or the History Jigsaw? And Ryan has chosen... Ah! Oh, two people voted, Solar System Quiz and the History Jigsaw. Fantastic. And that is the end of my poll, and it is the end of my session. So thank you ever so much, everyone, that uh, joined us to watch. And if you have any questions, ask Ryan or myself. Thank you very much.